comes uh, to Milan. Goodness me, and what's he happened goes. to control? He does, he goes, and Zachary goes with him! To Milan's going for this! Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about the Giro 2017 and how Tom Dumoulin overcame adversity to take home the win. So, looking at it, it was one of the most um, iconic wins in the last few years, not only because it was of a rider who was somewhat unexpected in the, in the Grand Tour field, but also because of the great fighting spirit, the battle against several riders he had during the race, and the way that it was until the, la the very last day on the time trial in Milano that Dumoulin got the win. So, talking about the beginning of the season, he uh, rode the tour about the Emirates tour and he finished first in Jebel Abit. And uh, it was a very strong ride from him. It was still in February and he was riding very strongly. In Terreno Adriatico, he had a similar ride, he finished 6th overall. Uh, Nairo Quintana took the overall win that year. And uh, coming towards the Giro, he was coming in as the leader for Sunweb, the sole leader. He had Wilco Kelderman as a big support for him at the time. And although the team wasn't as strong as some of the rival teams, he was still in a very good level and very respected between his rivals. He, his rivals included names such as the defending champion Vincenzo Nivoli, Nairo Quintana, the winner of Tirreno Adriatico, and coming in big form after the win in the Vuelta last year. Steven Kreuzweig was coming back after the disaster that occurred in 2017. He was looking for a payback. Uh, Team Sky duo Mikel Landa and Garen Thomas, and finally Thibaut Pinot as well. Those are some of the biggest names. There were some more though, as we're going to see later. Um, the first real clash in the overall was in Mount Etna, stage 4. Uh, the headwind really blocked out the attacks that came there. Vincenzo Nivoli was the name that moved the race the most, but due to the wind, there were no big gaps made that day. Ilner Zakarin was the only rider who was able to really get a gap in there. And Garen Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, was the rider who took the bonifications for third place. Jan Polank took the, the race lead there. Wilco Kelderman crashed out, unfortunately, on stage 9 to Blockhouse on that infamous crash with the motorcycle. And it was the day where Nairo Quintana won and he attacked several times to really take a hold of the overall. Tom Dumoulin paced the whole climb. He went over Nivoli, he went over Pinot. He worked together with Bal Kamalima and he severely limited his damage on that day. That was a day for the pure climbers to just 23 seconds. And on the next day on stage 10, he took the whole of the race with a massive time trial performance. Winning this time trial was really the big point of his race. This, um, well, it wasn't the weekend, but this Sunday and Tuesday was really the days where he took a hold of the race with a big, big overall lead. At the end of this time trial, he had 2 minutes and 23 over Nairo Quintana and he had already gone through some really tough mountains. He had shown his legs, he has shown his best in stage 14 to Arapa, which was the very infamous win he had. It was a very hard win, it was incredibly impressive. It was a day where Quintana was again on the attack as it was almost every mountain day. Dumoulin caught up with him and he counter-attacked Quintana for the first time in that race. He was really showing his true self that he was there to win the race and not just defend himself. The finish in Oropa was one of the most infamous in modern days as well. Ilmer Zakarin was in tremendous form that year, sadly. We aren't seeing the best of him um, since last year, two years ago, I don't remember exactly when. But Dumoulin went after him and in the day that really suited him was pan flat with a single uphill finish. It wasn't overly steep. Dumoulin paced it perfectly to take an amazing win. He took amazing confidence from it. He wasn't even expecting it himself, I'm sure of that. And he was with 2 minutes and 47 over Nairo Quintana. At the time, he had almost 4 minutes over riders like Nivoli. He was in a comfortable position, he had many days in the mountains left, but he had his confidence sky high, 
and everything was going well and it was it was starting to be hard to imagine how Dumoulin could be defeated because the race was going really everything was going around him he was doing everything perfect but in stage 16 is where his luck turned around it's where adversity started occurring so obviously we have <laughs> poop gate poop gate happened it was dramatic it was it was incredible so to say Dumoulin set himself chasing alone then the Pelton waited for a little bit but it was too much of a there was too much racing going on at the time so I can fully understand why the race went on Bahrain Movistar kept the pace going Zacharin also helped in and uh, Dumoulin chased solo he made his own time trial of the Umbrella Pass as Nibali and Quintana really pushed the race forward and tried to take as much advantage from this situation as possible Nibali ended up taking the win after a daredevil descent and Tom Dumoulin lost 2 minutes and 17 that day. He was still in pink but he had only 31 seconds over Nairo Quintana and 1 minute and 12 at the time. So his lead was starting to be very short with 3 big mountain stages, 1 to Ortize, 2nd to Piancavallo and the 3rd to Asiago. There were three big mountains that he still had to resist before getting to the final time trial, which was his field. And on stage 18 in the Paso Portoi, if I'm not mistaken, Quintana attacked, Nivoli attacked. This was the big move that was set to dethrone Dumont once and for all from this Giro. But on the summit of the climb, he pulled himself back solo into the group. And it was an impressive move. It's what saved this race. Ultimately, it's what gave him this win, really, this was a big, big move. And then on the final climb, he, he even attacked, he even attacked and he put Nivoli under pressure and really in big difficulties. However, what really came from this stage was the, the lack of cooperation there in those final kilometers. Pazavivo, Pinot, Zacharin, they all took advantage of it in one time on the road, given time really, because Dumoulin would not work for Nibali and Quintana and the other two have the experience and they know they could not do the same. So all of them lost some time that day, Quintana retained pink, he didn't lose any time, so it was a victorious day for him. On the next day though, it was his own team that by accident um, caused a split in the peloton very early in the stage in a very fast descent. It was absolute chaos, Dumoulin was again after brutal pressure. His luck is that he had company of riders like Adam Yates and Steven Kreuzweig whose teams worked together to reel them all back in. They managed to do it in the climb midway through the stage but then in the final climb to Piancavallo, Dumoulin struggled. It was the main day where he didn't have the legs to follow any of his rivals. He lost big amounts of time that day. He lost inclusively Pink. Pink went to Quintana. Dumoulin was now second overall, 38 seconds from Quintana. Nibali was 43. And they have another mountain stage to go. In Monte Grappa, Katusha really put a brutal pace in. Dumoulin was under pressure again. It was really hard for him to keep up, but he saved himself another time by pacing himself, by knowing what he can do, and going between his limits. Quintana again. Going on the final climb, even whilst in pink, he knows it's not enough. Nibali went with him, and ultimately it was a, a really exciting stage finish. Pazavivo, Zacharin, and Pinot were in the front group with him. And in the back group, Dumoulin had the help of Youngles, Smolima, Yates, uh, Jan Hurt, and um, there was another name, I don't remember who it was now. There were only 15 seconds of gap, it was very short, and Dumoulin went into the time trial with 53 seconds behind Quintana and in 4th place. And then on that final day, we know how it happened, we know what happened. Dumoulin absolutely smashed the final time trial as if it was the first day of the race. He got the gap he needed on Quintana. He flew. He didn't win on that day, he finished 2nd to Jos Van Enden. But he did more than enough for what his goal was, to really take the win in there. Nibali came to third overall, Pinot was out of the podium, Quintana was second, still a 
very good race, but he didn't manage to win. It was a shame for Quintana. He hasn't won a Grand Tour ever since, but Dumoulin took the best win that he could have hoped. I hope you liked this video, I hope you liked this um, this new topic that I'm trying to bring forward with my style of videos. If you've enjoyed this one, please consider subscribing and until the next time, until the next video, I'll see you next time.